With number 3, we see 4x times e to the 2x squared. Now we know that e to the x is a nice easy antiderivative. So if we could get e to the u, then that would work as well. But if we have e to the u, we're going to need a du, not a dx. So let's make u equal to our inner function of 2x squared. Now du, it turns out, happens to be 4x dx. And that's exactly what we have here, 4x and dx. So they will sub out, and the du will sub in, and also the u will sub in, and the 2x squared will sub out. So we still have the antiderivative. e was never touched, so that's still there. 2x squared is going to be replaced with u, and the 4x and the dx are going to be replaced with du. So by substitution, we take this product and we turn it into this very simple antiderivative. We know that e to the u antiderives to itself, plus the arbitrary constant. And then finally, we just place x back in for u. So we have e to the x squared plus c. And again, a nice quick derivative, right? This is e to the inner function. So we would do chain rule. e to anything derives to itself. So we will have e to the 2x squared. And then we will multiply it by the derivative of 2x squared, which is 4x. Notice what we have up here, 4x times e to the 2x squared. So this is definitely our antiderivative. With number 4, we see division. So when division comes into play, and there's no way to simplify it like we did with the previous problems, then we're looking to make u equal to the function inside the denominator. Right, so in this case, we have u is equal to t cubed minus 2. That will make du equal to 3t squared dt. Okay, it doesn't matter that we don't have x this time, whether it's x or t or some other letter, does not matter. We're just working with a relationship between u and that variable. So we need 3t squared dt, and lo and behold, we have 3t squared dt. That's equal to du, so our numerator will be du. The denominator will be u because t cubed minus 2 is the same thing as u. Now, whether you write your antiderivative in this manner or you write it as the antiderivative of 1 over u du, it doesn't matter where you put the du. Either way, we want to look at this and say, hey, this looks like 1 over x. And 1 over x antiderives to the natural log of the absolute value of x. So this will derive to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then again, natural log, absolute value, t cubed minus 2 plus c. And if we derive that, we would have to use the chain rule. We see we have a natural log of an inner function, so the derivative of the inner function would go in the numerator. That would be 3t squared, which is right there. And the original expression, t cubed minus 2, that original inner function goes in our denominator. So this checks out as well. Now we start getting into situations where the u still match, you know, we make the u what we want, but the du doesn't match perfectly. Okay, so we can see with number five, we have the cosine of an inner function. So our minds are saying, let's make the inner function our u. And when we do so, we have du equal to 12x squared dx. Now we have the x squared and we have the dx, but we don't have the 12. So therefore, we need to put the 12 into the integrand, and we need to counterbalance it with 1 12th on the outside. The reason being is 1 12th times 12, they multiply together and they give us 1. Which means we've only multiplied this expression by 1, which means we have not changed its value. Now, the 1 12th could also be on the inside, but we don't want it on the inside because we only want 12x squared dx on the inside. So the 12 takes its place on the inside, the 1 12th will be on the outside. Now, when it comes time to rewrite everything, the 1 12th is still on the outside. We have our antiderivative. Okay. The cosine, that was never touched, just like the e wasn't touched in problem number 3. So we have cosine right there. 4x cubed is the same thing as u. So we'll have cosine u, and then we have the x squared and the dx and the 12. x squared, dx, and 12. All three of those sub out. 
okay? And du subs in. That gives us a nice antiderivative to work with. This will be 1 12th. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. So sine of u plus c. And now we just place the x expression back in for u. So we have 1 12th. The sine of 4x cubed plus c. And again, if you derive this, you will end up with x squared times the cosine of 4x cubed.